guys, welcome to my channel. In this episode, you're gonna see how I transformed this old, drab 1980s drop leaf table into a beautiful and vibrant blue table. I had a lot of missteps along the way, and you're gonna see a little bit of that. So let's jump right in. So I just sanded the top of this piece. I took some in-progress pictures before. I forgot to take the before uh, picture, unfortunately. But here you can see the original color of the piece. And now we have the natural wood. It's all sort of like discolored on top, different colors. I've also sanded some of these corners here, not on this side, but on this side to make them more smooth and not all splintery. And I'll do the same here. I'm gonna start with the 80. Okay, and here it is, sanded all the way back. And I also rounded these edges a little bit. Now I'm gonna go in with the 120, 150, and then 220 over the whole table. I tried some stains, some sample stains here, and I decided that I was gonna go with the red oak. Um, then I sanded off the sample stains and I'm gonna go ahead and stain the whole table I'm gonna see what it looks like because as you can see here this table is like three different tones So the stain is gonna come out in three different ways, but I really just want to see what it looks like um, Here you can see obviously that I'm getting down deep into the bare wood here I tried to go down pretty deep with the 80 it doesn't get any lighter so I'm just gonna go in and just try the red oak on the whole thing see what it looks like if it looks too crazy then I'll paint it all right folks so this is the table it looks pretty bad it's super splotchy yeah it just looks really bad so this wood is so soft I think it's absorbing in different places different degrees of the stain also uh, as I showed you before they had this was a lighter wood that was sort of like a medium dark and then this was darker and it was darker here I couldn't sand it off um, and I didn't want to go too deep in the wood so this is kind of what I was left with. I also did forget to apply a uh, pre-stain conditioner, um, but I don't think it was going to make that much of a difference. I think at the end of the day, what I'm gonna do is paint the top of this table. At least now I know. The point was to see if the stain would take, so I wouldn't have any regrets about not trying it in the first place. And I'm going to use the espresso uh, paint. Okay, so I went ahead and I spray painted the top of the table and it's actually looking really, really nice. I love it. I don't know if I'm gonna go on with another coat. Uh, we'll see what it's like when it dries. Quickly brought it inside because the pollen is crazy out there and all the leaves falling. I still got a couple of particles on there, but not too bad. But I did a third coat. What I'm gonna do next, and it's gonna have to wait till tomorrow because uh, we're getting our daughter now. We're gonna do family time. I'm going to paint its Waverly Chalk Paint Lagoon. I'm going to go over it with the clear wax to seal it off. So I'm gonna be using oil-based polyurethane. There we go. And I'll see you in a bit. I'm gonna do that off camera because um, my other camera is charging, so we'll see. I'm gonna use the back of this brush that I ruined, as you can see, <laughs> um, to give this a good stir. Here we go. Okay, the poly is now on. Um, I used a foam brush in the middle and a regular brush, bristle brush, on the sides just to see the difference uh, in the middle. Um, but it also looks like a less even application. So at this point, I'm just gonna leave it alone. Uh, what I notice is that doing less sometimes is just better and just seeing what it's like, just letting it go, and then, you know, reworking it if I need to later. It's really thick. So I watered it down a little bit and I hope that works because I did see someone do it 
that's pretty. I saw someone water it down on their channel. I forgot her name, Christina something. And I watch a lot of her videos. She knows what she's doing. So I thought, hey, if she's doing it that way, and I only have, I only have one paint bottle, thinning it down might really work for me. So I went ahead and I did that. Actually, you can't really see the brush strokes too much. Um, I'm working a really bad light. I actually should have turned this table towards the light that I'm facing right now. But you know, you start doing this and then you learn slowly what and what not to do. Okay, here we are, it's the next day. I taped this off and then I scraped up the pieces of poly that got onto this edge using this tool, which I forgot the name of it. I used the 80 sandpaper to get anything off that the scraper wouldn't and then I went over it with the 220 to smooth it out. I just prepped this side as well, scraped off any poly or any gunks of paint that were on here. Went over it with the 80, sanded it down with the 220, smoothed it down, and now I'm gonna go ahead and start with the painting on this side as well. I'm actually going to leave the tape on because I need to wax this part here. Um, and I don't, I'm don't. i gonna do that last. I'm gonna go ahead and start working on these edges here. Okay, so here I'm dipping my cloth in a bit of lacquer thinner to get rid of the chalk paint. Now, if I had cotton swabs, this would actually be a lot better. A really rough edge on this. much better but bad news the lacquer thinner spilled and now I have this issue so I don't know what I'm gonna do 